Hello, uh, my name is Jeff Taylor, and we are here at the 25th Annual CROI Conference in Boston. And I'm here today with Dr. Sarah Gianella from UC San Diego. So welcome, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. So um, last year we did a, um, an interview with Dr. Gianella and also her um, partner in, in a research study at UCSD called The Last Gift Protocol, uh, which is really innovative and very exciting. And, and we'd love to hear more about um, what you're doing and a little background first in the study perhaps. Okay, okay yes. So um, HIV is known to spread through the body very early during infection. So it does not attack only blood cells, uh, but basically it enters every compartment uh, as well as every tissue across the body. So basically uh, after a few weeks after HIV infects the body already spreads to the brain and uh, uh, liver and heart and fat and muscles and basically everywhere you can think about. But because of obvious limitation, most of cure studies and HIV cure research focuses on blood or maybe some accessible compartment like genital secretion, cerebrospinal fluid, but it's very hard uh, to study the HIV reservoir in deep tissues. And this is one of the main limitations of HIV cure research, because if we want to cure HIV, we need to know how to attack this reservoir at every part of the body. So, so David Smith uh, and, uh, and I and our team at the University of California, San Diego, we developed this study uh, that basically uh, involves enrolling uh, HIV-infected people or people living with HIV who are uh, sick with uh, um, a non-AIDS-defining uh, illness, mostly cancer or neurologic uh, diseases like uh, ALS, and uh, to follow them uh, when they are close to death. So we, we usually have uh, a home visit uh, once every couple of weeks uh, to collect blood and characterize uh, the reservoir deeply in blood. Mm. And then uh, these participants basically um, agree to donate their body once they pass uh, for a rapid autopsy so that we can collect uh, all sorts of tissues uh, and uh, very rapidly, so, so that the RNA and protein are still preserved, uh, and freeze them uh, for all sorts of cure-related studies. So that's very different. I know over the years there have been a number of um, um, reservoir, or not reservoir, but tissue studies. This, um, California has a neuro, uh, neuroids tissue network. Mm -hmm. But so the difference with this one is that it's a rapid autopsy done immediately after death? I think the two main differences uh, between Last Gift and uh, California uh, Neuro AIDS repository. And by the way, Last Gift and CNTN work together. We do not compete. Every patient is co enrolled in both study. But I think what the Last Gift adds is first of all, the rapid autopsy component. We have uh, much more resource. Uh, doing a rapid autopsy requires 11 people on call 24 7 <laughs> to carry it through. This is something that CNTN doesn't have the resource to do. And, 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 and another difference is follow patients and participants so close uh, b um, before that. CNTN, uh, sorry, <laughs> CNTN uh, has a visit uh, in average uh, one year to six uh, months. Uh, um, and so I think that the average time between the last visit and the autopsy is often more than six months. Uh -huh. And so basically, we don't really know exactly what happened this last uh, week right. uh, before that. And that's very important to characterize the reservoir. So you've now actually enrolled uh, several patients in the study. Do you want to describe the experience and how it's, uh, how it's been for your yeah. study team? Yes. And for the patients themselves and their families? So uh, I think the, the study has been much more popular than we were hoping. <laughs> so uh, we were a little bit worried at the beginning. So we did a lot of work to prepare ourselves uh, with the community and the community has always been supportive but you never know and uh, but uh, now we have been enrolling since uh, uh, since last august uh, and we already enrolled five uh, participants uh, and two participants uh, passed away and uh, we did the rapid autopsy but worked uh, uh, very nicely so we were able to get the body and do the autopsy within the six hour window Mm -hmm. um, it, so this study basically, I, I always say it changed my life, uh, like 
the relationship that I have with every single participant, uh, not only me, but the entire team is uh, amazing. Like we are, uh, like they are like families to us and I realize we are like family to them. Uh, often we are the first and the last person that they want to see. <laughs> They, they are very worried about all the arrangement uh, to make sure that uh, we get what we need. Uh, and they always let us go and visit them, uh, even uh, during the last days of life. Uh, we, so we try not to intrude them, but they are the one who often insist uh, to let us come. And the family is very respectful. They know this is what they want. And uh, so I will say this study is unique. And, uh, and that's... Uh, so the participant really give us a gift, not only in terms of the body, but right. as a whole experience. And, and I do feel that the other way around, uh, participants are very um, motivated. And uh, having the opportunity to be part of the study at the end of their life gives mm -hmm. them a lot of meaning and, uh, and like uh, feeling a purpose. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I remember when uh, you and Dr. Smith uh, first approached the community. You came to the community advisory board and to some of us um, advocates in the community and, and asked us about this, and, which is unusual. I mean, often <laughs> community involvement in research tends to be an afterthought sometimes. And, and I think you were really proactive and had really genuine concerns of how would this be perceived by the community because it is a very intimate and vulnerable time of life for people when they're. they're they're, uh, they're dying, but certainly as a person living with HIV myself for, for many decades and having lived through the worst parts of the epidemic when people were dying um, at an alarming rate, that um, people would be willing to do this. They were willing at the beginning of the epidemic to make sacrifices to get the treatments that we have today that are keeping people alive. And now at the end of life, they want to be able to do the same thing, but for often many people for, for decades now, because they've been so heavily treated or have other you know age-related problems, are now excluded from studies and they really miss the opportunity to provide that and so you're right it really is a gift for them to be able to uh, to do that it's, it's kudos to you for reaching out to the community and uh, yeah. Yeah, determining that before you got started yeah it has been a blessing a blessing for us uh, and uh, it's a uh, it's a pleasure to me, to me and an honor and a blessing really to work with this uh, participant and have the opportunity to be part of their life uh, mm -hmm until the very end uh, and uh, we share a lot of special moments uh, that will remain in my heart uh, like they open up to us uh, mm -hmm. they tell us stuff that they might never told to anybody else right we take the time really to sit down with them and uh, mm -hmm. talk and well something yeah. unique about this study i think is you've really incorporated a social science approach to uh, to doing this mm -hmm. so you get you know more than just the uh, you know the biomedical uh, information in the samples, but you've incorporated social science. You want to speak to some of that and how you've yes. Uh, so we on? so we have a, a big team of uh, social scientists, community, and ethicists uh, who is led by Karina Dubé, and she's a so social scientist herself, and she developed this long questionnaire with uh, input from the community over many many hours of uh, work, uh, where, where we really go in detail and depth, um, mm -hmm. many aspects of life and death uh, with uh, the last gift participant himself, but also with the next of kin, mm -hmm. when we ask them about hope and uh, altruism and uh, the experience of being part of the study and their view about that and about uh, the last gift, the community. And, uh, and like it's an opportunity for the participant himself uh, to think about it. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, uh, it takes us hour to administer the questionnaire because uh, people start talking about it. And right. then the discussion just becomes deep and deep. And uh, so I, I think that part is very important. And we will get better with our study as we gain insight from every participant. Well, certainly, I think it's important for cure research because it's so entirely different. and. You know, the studies that they're going to be doing in people who aren't at the end of life are still going to demand incredible sacrifices, mm -hmm. asking people to stop their drugs, you know, give lots of samples from different body compartments. So I think that kind of research is really going to inform the other research in the field just mm -hmm. as much as, uh, you know, the, the reservoir samples that you're uh, able yeah. to provide that weren't available before. So it's terrific. That's true. So I, this isn't just happening in San Diego, right? You've got a team kind of not only across the country but around the world of the people involved in this. Do you want to speak to... Uh, to that collaboration. So, also, so right now the the last gift uh, um, project per se 
is happening only in San Diego, like right. we are enrolling only in San Diego, mostly because of the logistic of the rapid autopsy, that as I said before, we have 11 technicians yeah. on call um, to make it happen, and we are happy to expand, uh, but we need more resources, of sure. course. But we do have a larger group of people that are interested in our tissues, uh, uh, for example, we are collaborating with uh, a group in Zurich. Mm -hmm. They developed um, an assay to look at integration site, uh, like to characterize where the virus integrates mm. in, the in the human genome. And we will be sharing our tissue sample with them. And basically with whoever else has a good question and can make a good use of the tissue. And we have like a concept sheet uh, process. Like mm -hmm. if somebody's interested in any last gift uh, tissue, as long as they have the resource uh, and uh, and the good question, basically, mm -hmm. this is what our participant would have wanted to. Right. Yeah. It's answer. a really precious resource. Yeah, exactly, so. it is. It is, and we are happy to share, of course. Terrific. Well, this has really been wonderful, and thank you so much for sharing this with us. And uh, it's very exciting to see the progress you're making. Um, where can people find out more about the Last Gift Study? So we have a, um, a web page. Uh, which is, I think, you see the atlasgift.org, mm -hmm. but I might be wrong. <laughs> well, you can always Google last gift. <laughs> you can always UCSD. Google uh, yeah. last gift UCSD, and I, you can find it, uh, or you can always reach out uh, either to me, Sarah Janella, or to David Smith uh, personally, and we will be happy to um, to talk with you about it. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you.